Good morning, folks. I think some of the uh, core folks will be here in just a little bit. They had a, a couple of last minute things to wrap up. Hey Adam, I hope you don't mind. I, I put on your uh, your wall clock profiler since I, I'm so excited about it. Well, no problem. But where you did did put it? I didn't get it. Oh, sorry, on the the ether pad. Oh, okay. Hopefully we'll get the other guys soon. If not, I'll just start. Yeah, everyone. Have a sage. Good morning. Good morning. Sorry, we were talking about something else and being very rude. Um, <laughs> uh, all right. Quick look at pull requests. Um, there's a bit vector thing that I hadn't seen. So it looks like that's an RBD thing. Jason reviewed it. Um, merged one of Igor's small optimizations and um, the approx size thing is finally reverted. Um, that should have a pretty significant impact for people testing on master. We closed the op commit op applied thing. Um, and for what it's worth, right now I'm looking at completely eliminating the applied um, callbacks in the object store interface and doing tracking in file store. That's a whole other thing. I'll put it on the list soon if we have time, but basically need to um, or nation of applied. Um, build a purchase concept and, and see what the performance impact is and see if it is feasible. Um, and I closed the old sync term, sync commit thing um, because I did like half of it on the read side completions already and I'm not sure if we want to do the right side. We can always resurrect it later. 
Um, let's see. There's a pull request in flight on EC that looks pretty good. It's just switching around the reads um, to not send messages to yourself to do the reads, but just to do it sort of in line. Um, it didn't do that before for simplicity, but the, the fix to make it do it the efficient way is actually pretty straightforward. So um, I think he has one small more, another small change to make, and then if we can go ahead and test it, hopefully that'll work. Um, there's still an open pull request for doing tiering inside Blue Store. Um, I'm still not sure if we want to do it or not. Um, so that's just sort of sitting there. Um, and uh, let's see, Josh has a backport of the randomization of the split thresholds for Jewel. That looks good. I think that just needs to get tested. Um, and there's this QAT pull request I mentioned last week, I think. Um, like they updated it. I'm not sure what the one is. Did somebody, somebody want to volunteer to like shepherd this one? Missing pieces. Looks like it's. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm sure it's transparent for as far as the on-disk format goes. Um, I guess that's mostly it. As far as new stuff. Um. So um. Uh, Shin Mei is here. Um, did you want to talk about the your stuff with um, VPP this week, or do you want to wait? Next week and tell you uh, results. Yeah, I have some um, uh, architecture to introduce uh, how to use the VPP to integrate into the Ceph. Uh, okay. So I can share my screen. How to share my screen? Oh, share screen here. <laughs> mm -hmm. So can you see my screen? Yep. Yeah. Oh, um, so um, I try to do some uh, POC to uh, use the VPP uh, as the user stack, uh, user space uh, TCP IP stack. So uh, VPP provide um, uh, some interface to the application to use it as the uh, user space st stack. So um, it uh, has uh, several uh, uh, I think uh, has several uh, interfaces. The, the popular one is it's called uh, VCL. It is v, uh, VPP communication library. So uh, the application used VCL has two modes. One is um, it just used the uh, preload mode. So the uh, application is not uh, needn't uh, modified so uh, it's native application so just uh, use the ld preload method to preload the vcl library then the library the the uh, it will hook the sock, uh, socket layer and uh, so when you uh, call the POSIX socket they will go to the uh, this preload library vcl preload library and uh, this library will use the uh, a message uh, something used the shared memory to talk with the VPP uh, binary API. Uh, uh, this the, the right side is the uh, VPP uh, um, software stack. So the binary API will call the session API, some, uh, and then TCP API uh, go to the DPDK. Uh, so another mode to use VCL that the, you can uh, build in the VCL API into your application. So it's not pre um, pre mode uh, uh, preload mode. So you, you just call the VCL API uh, in your application, uh, build in, in your application. Then the VCI, uh, VCL library will use the same method to message send the, send the message to the VPP to uh, set up the session connection. So another one I'm not very uh, familiar with is that they have a um, plug-in uh, in the, the WPP called memory uh, 
virtual network interface. So there is memory interface uh, plug-in here. They use the uh, so there is a library can be called uh, can be built in the in the application. So application use that uh, library memory interface to communicate with that plugin. So just like uh, to talk uh, to talk with a virtual network interface. Uh, I try to use the uh, the right one. Use the VCL. Uh, first is use the preload mode. So I needed to modify the the Ceph code. I just uh, used the POSIX stack. Uh, so I think uh, it should work because the the preload mode uh, we see here will hook the uh, socket layer. So we will call the when the native application called the uh, POSIX stack uh, something create uh, create socket uh, bind socket, they will go to the VCL library. So that is the mm, the uh, VPP. Uh, provide the interface. So another suggestion is that. Uh, I don't think maybe it is a uh, fit for Ceph. So Ceph can be worked as a plugin in uh, VPP, but it needs more code to uh, to integrate uh, Ceph into the VPP because uh, Ceph run that mode. Ceph need to run in the VPP process. So this uh, is very uh, to use the VCL is a simple one, and. Uh, uh, here, uh, um, okay. So um, the app application used uh, uh, VCL. So the for the server you need to attach and bind. For the client side you need to do the attach and the connection connect. And uh, there is a, a share uh, memory between the application and the VPP process. So when the client, um, uh, when the data transfer, there is one copy, one time copy here. Uh, so the client uh, application uh, need a, a copy to the buffer, uh, to the shared memory uh, to the buffer. And uh, the uh, APP transfer the packet, uh, it received also need a copy to the shared memory FIFO. So there is one time copy here. Uh, so inside a uh, think messenger stack uh, currently, this is the currently uh, architecture. So um, under the async messenger, there is a network stack layer. So currently, it include, included uh, include a POSIX stack, DPDK stack, and RDMA stack. And uh, um, under each stack, for example, under the DPDK stack, there is the DPDK worker. So the DPDK worker, uh, there is a event center and the event driver uh, also has the DPDK driver. The event driver, uh, real, uh, DPDK driver realized the event driver. Uh, so uh, if we, uh, the, um, the, the latest uh, VPP and uh, the sister also included the, the DPDK uh, realization. So no matter what we use, uh, sister or VPP, the DPDK code can be removed from the, the self async messenger because the DPDK device in, uh, initialized the uh, memory pool initialized is uh, realized in the VPP stack or sister stack. And uh, 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 if we use the uh, VPP, so we can remove the DPDK stack to a VPP stack. If we want to use the built in the VCL API, we just uh, uh, need to write a, some, a, a similar uh, VPP stack like the POSIX stack, not called the system call uh, when we created the uh, socket or band less than the socket, we need to call the VCL library directly. Or otherwise, we uh, don't build in the uh, VCL library. We just use the POSIX stack and uh, use the preload, uh, preload VCL. So they will, I think it will hook the uh, socket layer. So the native, uh, native POSIX stack will go through the VCL uh, library to talk with the 
uh, we, uh, talk with the VPP. So all the code in DPDK, uh, about the DPDK uh, device initialize and the memory pool management uh, can be removed from the uh, self async messenger. So this is the current like um, what, what what I do uh, as um, the, yeah. So you, that's all. Okay. So you're doing you're doing the preload method then. Yeah, I, I, I used the preload, so I needed to modify the code just to do the uh, performance test. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that, that sounds great for doing a test um, to see what the performance is like, but I'm guessing that what we really want to do if, if we go forward with PPP is we want to um, use the VCL directly. Okay. So it's uh, um, just a socket layer, so it's simple, I think. Yeah. Not much but code. The the main difference, if I understand it, is that all the calls are non-blocking. It's all asynchronous. So you have completions and you have, you know, queue event. Um, the thing that is, and I'm, I, have, I, I haven't really read the <laughs> async messenger code much, so, um, but the thing that confuses me is that if, if you're using C star, um, or even if you're if you're using VPP, then it seems like that whole the whole thread pool model that um, the async messenger has should shouldn't be necessary because whenever you're initiating something, you can just queue it with VCL, and whenever you get a completion, that's already going to be executing in some other like VCL's thread context, whatever that is, and that should be able to just again trigger the async event is that uh do i have uh, the right mental model here or VPP used the uh, epo uh epo mode uh, okay okay epo they have the epo driver supported so if we use uh, something like POSIX stack um they can use the epo okay but the, so there'd just be one socket that says there's some DPP completion ready to go, and then you would go grab it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Is that is that not obviated if we if for whatever reason we were able to use the in process integration where VPP and 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 Ceph are are collocated? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That that one is um, a taller order, right? These are like this would be Ceph would be a plugin loaded directly into the VPP process on the host. Um, that's a yeah. much taller order. Yeah, I'm not proposing. I'm not myself proposing promoting that, but the in, but the inverted con, version of control version of that might be more typical. <laughs> and then I mean, I mean, in other words, it might be something that eventually happens, or I'm not sure what the real reason rationale would be that. That they wouldn't want to support that. My, so I, I I was trying to ask this question when we we're talking to the VPP folks last week, and my understanding was that um, that's not a model that they plan to support. Although you know, in principle, maybe they could, but they're, they're not planning on doing that. Um, the model is very much that there's a there's a dedicated VPP process um, that own, owns the world, um, and then they have sharing mechanisms so that you can utilize it over shared memory channels but if you if you own the world um they don't make it easy but they don't plan on letting you sort of consume pvp that way it's kind of weird but okay <laughs> It'd be yeah to split the two models at least in some test programs and see and see what kind of results i mean that i mean if you look at the results in something like shaman pipe or whatever they're sure i remember will do pretty well but you'll definitely feel a small hit from it mm -hmm. Is that ac accurate, Shinmei? So the self asked plugin? Yeah. I do think it is acceptable. <laughs> I I think it's it would be hard. <laughs> I I agree. I think it's yeah. hard. Uh, too big a process uh, built in together, and uh, I mean, there's so a different uh, schedule uh, mechanism. I mean, at, at a more likely um, model, um, Matt, if if we're thinking about 
Seth stuff as VPP would be something like RGW being a VPP plugin. Where um, yeah. I'm sure we could look at it differently. Because the, the the types of things that are plugins today are um, like you know network translation layers, routing layers, all the SDN stuff runs as plugins, um, and things like load balancers. And I think something like RGW, where it, it's it it is a gateway function, is like a good fit for that, where you're you're redirecting and sending traffic around or whatever. Um, have you I mean, have we asked? I guess it'll be interesting to discuss all this with uh, Avi or people in, in the C Star community with how they're how yeah. they're, what they see happening. Uh, how, yeah, it'd be very interesting to hear their VPP. So that the the sort of the the takeaway that I um, ended up with from that discussion with the VPP folks was that VPP is um, is doing a really good job of building like reusable, accessible infrastructure. Um, it's being used for SDNs, load balancers. It's you know it wires into virtualization. It's orchestrated via Kubernetes, but it is like it's it's really a replacement for the kernel network stack, right? It's just a pluggable one. It happens to be running in user space, but it's faster. Um, so in in it, it'll having Seth be able to plug into it um, when you're on hyper converged nodes, like you're an OpenStack or Kubernetes node, um, and Seth is one of many services. Like it makes it'll make great make a lot of sense to to wire into VPP directly instead of using the normal sockets layer. Um, but it's not it's different than a situation where um, Seth wants to own the world or own the box. So if you imagine like a one use server packed with NVMEs doing nothing but storage, and you want your Seth OSDs in there, um, it's not a it doesn't seem like it's a good choice there where you want to eliminate that shared memory overhead. Right. Um, and so I think my big question is how this relates to C star. If we use the C star network programming stack, um, can that be if we're using that as our, our sort of general network API that can either use POSIX or DBDK um, in CSR land, can that also be used to talk to VPP? Yeah, I think I, or yeah, I, think, I, think, I think I see a Fisher there, but but, but I want to hear what they say because I might I might be missing yeah. it. Yeah. Because again, the thing that the thing that comes up with C Stars Network Stack is that it doesn't have IPv6. That's sort of the the current concern you know the, 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 the i was expecting the tcp stack that in t star to have evolved further than it is and then so that seems like that suggests that there's other stacks going to be during the picture so yeah um but again so i mean coming back to um async messenger um chunmei do you mind showing the um the architecture slide i think it was like your second or third slide that showed the Async Messenger. Async Messenger, yeah, with all the bits. Yeah. This it, one? Yeah. So the, the thing that I don't understand is that if you, there's all this stuff in Async Messenger with the event center and the event driver. And that my recollection is that this is just a thread pool, a set of workers. Um, in, if we move to CSTAR, then that's all going to go away. So it seems like this is, if I'm understanding correctly, this is sort of an interim piece because um, async messenger is being the bridge between the threaded model and all the and the asynchronous uh, DPTK stuff. So a sync but, messenger will create the net stack, network stack. Network stack will create a worker pool here. And uh, well, the worker pool here is um, has the, each worker uh, thread has event center. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, so uh, uh, so each worker thread will uh, handle the the uh, how to say the the, uh, the socket listen the socket uh, your band band. So uh, when the connection come here, uh, the worker thread there is a pool mode. They pull, uh, pull the event from the event center, and the, um, they will pull the uh, TC, uh, TCP stack to. Uh, uh, currently, it will pull uh, pull the uh, C star TCP stack uh, to uh, to uh, get to know if there's packet uh, received. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
So it's not the e e pool mode. He just uh, uh, called the pool. Uh, So when the um when the DPDK um device and the DPDK driver get the uh uh oh, how to say it the work work thread will uh, will call the DPDK uh, um code to get if there is a uh a, a packet received and they will call each uh, each stack layer uh, to check if this this layer has the have the packet received. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> I mean, Josh and Greg, correct me if I'm wrong, but it, I think what we what we really want to do is get to the point where we sort of where we just I, <laughs> replace all of this right with the reactor, and so yes. that instead of having a bunch of worker threads. So currently, I think the C star has changed changed much. Um, if uh if uh use the latest uh, c star it the work mode will not be the same as the current uh, self use mm -hmm. i mean yep. the c star has um uh has an interface you just uh, call that interface and uh, something engine i'm not very familiar with c star uh the the work mode may be different with the current self use yeah I guess that we wouldn't actually be explicitly thinking about or worrying about DPDK and C star would do that for us. Right? Yeah. If we're just coding to yeah. if we just write so, a messenger that's So from my understanding, no matter uh, the C star and the WPP, they also included all the DPDK uh work in his uh stack. So the DPDK, I think a single messenger will not realize there is DPDK and the layer. Mm -hmm. Yep. Just a talk with the user stack is okay. Yeah. So that means uh, we, we, uh, the self will decouple with DPDK. But I don't know how the uh, how they transfer the package from the user space with the async messenger because if you don't uh, realize the DPDK uh, exists uh, because uh, because DPDK used a huge page uh, and uh, no uh, zero copy, so how you manage the buffer if you don't realize there is DPDK and you don't realize the uh, the huge space in the async messenger how they transfer the package from the buffer. I'm, I'm not understanding it. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. Um, okay, well, thanks for, thanks for sharing that. Um, I think it gives us something more to think about. Um, Josh and Greg, do you guys have any questions before we continue? Not at the moment. Um, I think we need to look more into um, C stars reactors implementation of how it's handling the networking to see what how it would make sense to integrate with EPP. Yeah, but I wonder if folks do. Yeah. I wonder if it's a good time to um, ping Avi again, or or just ping the list or whatever, and ask about the relationship to VPP specifically and IPv6 and the C star. Um, TCP stack and and so on to get some yeah get a better picture yeah. there I think that's a good idea um okay uh, all right um, moving on a little bit um uh, I asked Adam and Radic to look at um to summarize the all the random stuff we've looked at in Blue Store um. To tweak performance and see which one still makes sense and what sort of opportunities there are. Um, there's a link in the pad. Um, Radic uh, summarized it. Um, this fusion one was trying to batch things into larger transactions um, and to eliminate sorting. Um, it tends to make rocks to be's life easier, but there's a bunch of extra work to sort of offset it, so it only kind of helps. Um, 
I guess what's the what's the sort of bottom line on this one? Is this going to be oh, so no impact on 4K random rights? So that's not super promising. <laughs> um, yep. So we made uh, those testing solely uh, using the FIO object store plugin. Uh, mm -hmm. It's it's quite far uh, from OSD because it doesn't even try to mimic uh, the PG uh, lock related traffic. Uh, this might also we were testing also only using uh, run rights while for instance uh, the, the 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 duplication we have in fuse and reordering branch may might uh, be used may might be still useful for uh, sequential rights still needs a lot of more testing definitely inside of osd yeah okay what's your sort of are you optimistic not too optimistic like how uh as far as like how how worthwhile to so invest time there... in it? <laughs> i'm i mean I don't, I, I don't think it will be a breakthrough to be honest yeah okay to get more from rocksdb we would we would uh, need to uh, to uh, to make the batching inside rocksdb much much more deeper it uh, at the moment it ends very very uh, very very quickly it's shallow it's on it ends around uh, iterate method of the right batch so yeah okay um Okay, uh, the next one is skip list huge TLB. Um, looks like it had a negligible effect on FIO. The, the, it makes me nervous when we don't see an effect with FIO because FIO most of the time is being spent in Blue Store. And so usually any benefits we have will be even less than the full once you add in all the OSD overhead. So um, then what's the DN, DNC? What does this one do? Uh, divide and conquer. There is a hint validation algorithm uh, inside of uh, mem inline skip list insert method. Uh, at the moment, uh, it's uh, it's uh, linear. The pull request brought uh, logarithmic version. Unfortunately, it's it doesn't make a huge impact. Uh, we're still waiting on uh, caches. So okay. Um, and the variant splice level. And the variant one also is pretty small, one to two percent. Yeah. Okay. Um, there was another one that was older that was um, just trying to. It was doing batching on the on the blue store side to try to combine lots of transactions into one larger single right batch, I uh, believe. It's big. It's very big and uh, pretty old one. I, if I recall yeah. correctly, uh, we were, it, it, it gave around 10% uh, at the cost of uh, he, introducing huge complexity uh, because of the sequencers. There was a need to uh, to uh, rework the, to restructure the whole uh, batch of of uh, transaction context uh, when uh, getting when when it comes to uh, to sequencers to ensuring right, uh, the order. Okay, was it because you're sharing a batch across different sequencers, or was there like one batch per sequencer? Uh, I, it, it was shared. Okay. Yeah, that would make sense. Go correctly. Okay. Are you talking about uh, the WIP BS batch IO completion PR? Uh, let Maybe. me check the name. I pasted in. Uh, yeah, that's the one. Yeah. So I. I recently tried to revive this on master, but it's, as like you said, it's complicated. I'm not quite sure how to deal with some of our, the things that we've added since then. Yep, we got the final threats in them, so another stage. Okay. 
Um, OK. So basically nothing super promising <laughs> right now. Probably the async, the async stuff is going to be a better investment in complexity. Oh, uh, there was uh, another change, a very, very small one, uh, but can help with PD lock. Uh, RocksDB internally uh, can use multiple uh, hints when it comes to uh, operation on a mem table. Uh, we have this feature disabled. I've tested it on on uh, file on the file plugin and didn't uh, show huge difference. Uh, but if the keys related uh, to PG lock uh, are enough different from the uh, from the bluster uh, specific ones, maybe we could get uh, something interesting. That's right. I and this. moreover, the, the modification will be very, very uh, small. It's, it's almost tuning a config option uh, that we pass to, uh, to RocksDB. Is it um, like making the, the key names have some sort of prefix or something? Or you provide a function that like matches? Something like the... that. There are multiple. Yep, yep, yep. There are uh, multiple hinters available. Two okay. at the moment, if I recall correctly. But you can still provide your own. OK. That one seems like it might be a win because it's a small, minimal complexity. <laughs> um, it seems like that one and the variant one, um, since it's purely inside RocksDB, would be the most most promising. Yeah, it's uh, it looks uh, it looks uh, uh, that it on, needs only testing, and if if it's good, uh, we can send it to uh, to the upstream. Yep. Okay. Um, all right. Cool. Uh, thanks for thanks for putting that together. We can direct ourselves accordingly. Um, Mark, you want to talk about Spectre? Well done. Sure. Uh, so we talked about it a little bit last week. Um, there is some new stuff out there. There's um, Pharonix has a, a more recent set of tests looking at uh, the underflow protection uh, p uh, patch that, that went out. And it looks like that actually hurts performance even more than, uh, than the, the generic version. Um, what else? There's there's a bunch of other stuff floating around. It's all kind of messy right now because there's multiple different patches for multiple different architectures. There's um, some AMD specific patches for uh, for Spectre, and then there are the both the Spectre multiple different version Spectre patches for Intel, and then also meltdowns patches for for intel so all of this gets kind of confused when people are looking at benchmarks but the the gist of it is it looks to me like when the the smoke clears um probably we're gonna see pretty pretty harsh uh results for stuff on on intel processors when when doing lots of uh of really cpu intensive stuff so like small random writes on file store i i'm kind of a little concerned about on um, blue store maybe not as bad though like you said sage when we were talking uh with fewer sys calls um i still suspect context switching will be kind of nasty but we'll see yeah um the the good news though is that the red hat performance team is looking at a lot of this stuff so um hopefully they'll they'll be able to guess some numbers and maybe they'll they'd be willing to send somebody to come to this meeting and present for folks um, yeah. Okay. So one one thing that you'll see there is the Skyla DB guys are um, are kind of showing off how how resilient they are when avoiding syscalls and context switching using C star. Uh, it's it's pretty pretty impressive, frankly. Um, so this may be just another another justification for why it's good for us to be looking at this kind of a charted async approach um yeah it, they, they do pretty well um let's see that's that's really about it uh not much else right now for that maybe move on to uh 
I don't know if Adam wants to talk a little bit about his wall clock profiler. Yeah, sure. Glad to do that. Uh, first of all, I'll just share a uh, GitHub link. Okay, this is the the tool which actually mimics the behavior of Mark's uh, wall clock profiler, uh, which was uh, based on uh, GDB API. Uh, the only uh, functional difference is that it uses lib un unwind uh, directly and forms just a almost standalone binary. It's uh, much faster. I was able without problem to sample uh, running OSD uh, one time thousand one hundred times per second all the threads without noticing any performance drops uh, so that that was nice and the bad side is that I wasn't able to to make it fully standalone tool and it's required to preload to the target process some uh, shared library before it runs so that's um, uh, that's inconvenience, huge inconvenience. I, I intended to to fix it, uh, but uh, what is uh, currently difficult for me is that uh, default uh, linker tools. Uh, I, I'm not able to to get them to produce a binary, mm -hmm. a relocable binary which is properly linked. Uh, maybe it's just uh, uh, confined to. A badly constructed uh, start uh, function because it's it's con constructed uh, by the linker mm, because this is of course uh, broken I'm I'm sure of that the rest of code looks uh, more or less fine but but I wasn't able to test that so but it, it will require time but I currently suspended that uh, it's. Uh, on some free time, I, I will resume that and try to uh, to understand why why it's not linking properly. I mean, actually, the gold uh, linker is doing much better work because it is able to produce proper uh, calls, but relocations of uh, data in start start function are bad. But LD original LD even gets uh, jump addresses wrong. I mean, they are relocable, but too relocable to some weird places, and that's broken. So that's that's it. But the tool is, I think, uh, can be used. If there are some problems, please please inform me. I will fix anything that's that's broken. One thing I'll add that I was really, really excited about that Adam uh, was was willing to do for me is look, compare the GDB PMP results with his profiler, and the results more or less agree with each other, which at least for me was really, really exciting because it means that we now have two tools that that both show similar numbers, and before that we we didn't really have any idea um, whether or not what we saw was was really accurate it seemed like it was but um you know this m makes it at least for me a little more likely that that what we're seeing is is hopefully real so uh thank you adam <laughs> i really appreciate it yeah, i was i was really amazed that using a gdb a tool that was reducing severely uh, performance still the output was uh, similar to to the run when when the performance of the process is not uh, reduced that was kind of strange for me but so it so it looks it, i'm i'm curious if we will see situations in which that's not true if there are things that yours are going to show us that that gdb pmp does not but uh we'll just we'll have to see yep I'm very excited though to add your support for your profiler into CBT because if it's not affecting the performance results, that means that we can run it during tests. Um, 
maybe make sure, maybe go through lots of things to check and see, but there's a good chance we can add it and start getting wall clock profiles on all of the different runs, which for me, it'd be amazing. That sounds like a great so next I'm, step. I'm, I'm looking forward to, to integrate it. Let's, let's try it. Sure. All right. I'll, uh, I'll quickly go through my thing here. So um, on, on Friday, I decided um, uh, maybe maybe slightly um, uh, insanely, I guess, to uh, to go back and, and make new store work in master um, just because I was uh, I, I had all of these memories of new store doing large sequential writes better than blue store. And it, it seemed really strange to me. And then I was I was noticing in in Blue Store when I was running 4K or sorry large uh, sequential write tests that um, it was we were, we were spending a ton of time in the KV sync thread doing F syncs essentially um, lots of uh, well 270 11K uh, write ahead log writes per second while doing these big four megabyte sequential writes and then all of this time spent F syncing that stuff. So I was like, well, maybe I'll just go back and see if I can make new store work and, and take a look and see what it's doing. Um, so that became kind of like a, a Friday afternoon project. And uh, over the weekend, got it working, uh, ran some tests. And the the interesting thing about it is that actually Blue Store was a lot faster than New Store at it, um, which was it was interesting to see. Um, I did. Uh, at Sage's request, ran some block traces. There's a link in there you can see. Um, there's actually in Blue Store some some tearing going on. Um, I, I haven't looked at why, I guess, but um, but you can you can see kind of some interesting behaviors there. Um, also, one of the things that came out when I was doing that is just kind of how much the read ahead uh, when using fragments on the the file system helps when you have no client side read ahead. Uh, that is one case where new store looks a lot more like file store and both are, are better than, than blue store. But on the right path, all of the work we did to make blue stores writes faster really helped. I mean, it's like twice as fast for, for small 4k random writes. Uh, this is RBD with, I don't know, some, some reasonably decent amount of, uh, of IO depth. So, um, it just, not not anything you know real mind blowing or anything here, but just you know it's it's nice to see that in reality blue store is is actually on the right path is is doing really well both for large rights and for small rights um and then kind of just the confirmation that yeah we're we're kind of just hurting from not doing read ahead anyway that's that's all <laughs> oh maybe i'll th I'll throw in here not related to that but um uh, there's an interesting post by Christoph Helwig. He's uh, mainlining the old AIOF sync code, Sage, that, that you saw like from two mm -hmm. or three years ago. Um, and he's working on some other stuff for the the, the Skyla DB guys. Yeah. His other so, piece I think is going to be more exciting for us. It eliminates a syscall when you're polling for AIOs. Um, I'm not sure if we would actually use the um, async, f-sync. Or not, not for Blue Store at least. Um, but yes, it's exciting that I'm moving forward there. Um, this wasn't in the pull request list, but I wanted to mention it. Um, it came in. I just noticed it this morning. It's one of the top ones. Um, the United Stack folks have um, made a new cache tiering mode um, that works way better for them. Um, they get like uh, reduces flush by ninety percent. <laughs> um, with a zip distribution of random writes um, and with a similar hit rate to the normal write back mode. So that's a pretty big win. What they basically did was um, they just devoted a bunch of memory to making it replace, instead of using the hit sets and sequential hit sets to estimate temperature, they just went ahead and did a map of a hash ID to a counter that is the temperature. Um, and they add like an exponential decay um, and they're doing that instead. Um, so it uses a lot more memory, um, but it's actually can create an accurate temperature estimate. Um, and the other thing that it does is um, when you read it doing that temperature estimation, I think on the, I'm not sure, they added it to the reply. I'm not sure exactly why they did that, but um, yeah, I guess that's the main difference. 
Um, so I have some questions on their pull request. I'll see. Um, but, uh, Sage, I have a, 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 I would be very, very, very curious to see how this does compared to just like throwing away 99% of the, uh, of the, the, the flush requests. Yeah. Like just I've, really I you know, dumb. <laughs> I mean, we already do that, right? We are, you can already set a, a, a rate and it'll just, we'll just sample and throw away. Yeah. So, um, yeah, the, well, the, the whole point here, right, is the whole point is to reduce the amount of flush, flushes, but keep the, the hit rate high, right? So kind yeah. of I'm curious, once you normalize those, make the same number of flushes, how much is the, how much better is the hit rate? Uh, right. So they, did, they, they took the opposite approach. They fixed the, the hit rate is the same, but they have one-tenth of the flushes. I see. Okay. Um, okay. That's what they did. Um, anyway, um, it's a remarkably complete pull request that it adds feature bits <laughs> and all the rest of it. It's all broken out, <laughs> so it's in pretty good shape. Um, I have I had some questions and I was going to ask for more performance info, but that's kind of exciting. Um, and then the other thing, the last thing I'll mention, um, uh, an EC bug um, regression started me thinking about the unreadable callbacks again in the object storage layer. Um, these are really an artifact of file store because um, you couldn't read what you wrote until after file store had journaled it and then written it to disk. And so it has these dual, stupid dual callbacks. Um, none of the other backends need that because they write, um, they maintain an in-memory cache. Maybe KStore does, but we can just delete it if it doesn't. We don't really care. But MemStore and BlueStore don't need it because they have their own, they manage their own cache. Um, so... The, the, base, the thinking is basically to eliminate that from the object store inter interface and instead add a kludge inside file store that keeps track of um, writes that are in flight. And so if you try to read something that is in the process of being written, applied, um, it'll block that read until it's applied and it can read it back. So that sort of pushes the burden onto file store and then we eliminate all the, all the code in the OSD for all those callbacks and locks and whatever, there's a ton of it. Um, unclear what the performance penalty of doing that extra tracking in file store will be, um, or whether we'll get a benefit from removing the complexity everywhere else. Um, cause if it say speeds up blue store by 20% and slows down file store by 20%, that might still be worth it. Um, but we might want to wait one more release, um, before we sort of, as the balance shifts, <laughs> um, or maybe it won't be that bad. Who knows? Or maybe there's no performance win, and we should just wait until it's until we just want to simplify the code. Um, I'd say simplifying the code is more important than than whatever performance trade-off we get because we can make the yeah. we can bring performance back, but we we're not going to do anything if we don't simplify the code. So exactly, yeah, yeah, especially with this like looming um, C star refactor coming. Exactly. Um, so I go ahead. No, nothing. That was it. That was somebody about to talk. Yeah, I'm I'm kind of tempted to do the simple thing and just um, rip out all of the callback code um, without actually fixing file store first and just see what the effect is on blue store workloads to give us just a to know whether this is worth worthwhile. Um, but we'll see. The main the main thing that I that needs to happen is to take the sequencer concept and the collections and sort of combine them um, because on reads we need to wait for in-flight writes um, and in reality sequencers and there's there's already a one-to-one -one relationship between those two but there's still two different structures um, and so i need to combine those in the code and the interface whatever um, so that the reads will know what to wait for um, but uh once that happens um, we can proceed. So that's the next step. Um, that's it. Um, We've got three three minutes. If anyone has any last minute questions or thoughts, Craig and Craig and Josh, any thoughts on the 
relative value of simple code versus file store performance versus? Um, well, I think right now um, people do care about file store performance quite a bit. So people I want to test that before we paint out. So yeah. um, I like your plan of um, if seeing what the performance difference is um, without that. And if it's really bad, then maybe waiting a few releases to mm -hmm. shift to, to people to shift over to Blue Store. Yeah. yeah. I also think that if we shift to C Star, we can probably get that by just inserting futures or not. So I haven't thought about it much, but I think we just insert it like as part of the thing we give to maybe not. I think, the, I think the tracking is the same. Like we still need to pay file store still needs to like pay attention to which writes are in flight. That's where I'm worried about the overhead. Yeah. Whether we whether we're using locks and P threads and signals and whatever or um for future. I think that's sort of I'm not sure it helps. But when, yeah, I but I'm what I'm I'm trying to think I of think a way that, to like is I think that maybe we can avoid grabbing all the locks furiously for the other backends, but if we don't need them. Because like if we don't have right yeah. Yeah. So. I guess one one thing to keep in mind is that file store performance for anything fast might be going kind of downhill with all of the Spectre meltdown stuff anyway. If it's not helping. Certainly yeah. So if if that's the case, people we might need to move people over to Blue Store that care about performance sooner rather than later. So why is that? Do we just do a lot more syscalls for everything in File Store than we do in Blue Store or Yeah. Okay. I was trying I, I was earlier trying to speculate wildly about what would happen with Spectre. I was like, well, it would be really bad for us, but we do have an awful lot of our own CPU time, so maybe maybe it'll all just wash out. The um in in Blue Star it's a single syscall for <laughs> submitting a huge batch of I.O. And in file store you're doing a bunch of write calls. On the read side, um the cache is in user space, and so if it's cache data then it's a win. Um uh so all the metadata stuff will be cheaper. Um, when you're actually doing read I/O, um, it's the same number of syscalls. So you're still just reading blocks off disk, so that part won't help. But on the right side and the metadata side, it should be better. On the start. The other thing is that Blue Store is already faster, right? So even if we take a hit, or you know, if, if I mean, right now Blue Store is probably at least 50 to 100 percent faster for small random writes. Than file store is so you know file store taking a you know I don't know thirty percent hit versus blue store taking a twenty five percent hit you're gonna end up in a better much better place yeah. so what I mean what I'm what I'm trying to figure out is how to like answer the question of what the performance penalty would be on file store without actually doing all the work um, but I think there might not be a way to do that. <laughs> But I guess the upshot is that if um, the the initial refactor is actually the first hard part, and that we can do, there's no performance implications there. It's just sort of simplifying the object sort interface so that sequencers and collections are the same thing. Um, and so I'll go ahead and do that first, and then it should be possible to have <clears> something <throat> pretty quickly to do the other half. Um, yeah. And in the long term, we have Bluster have uh, its own abstraction over block device. It's not dependent on the kernel. Yeah, true. Right, we could use a uh, SPDK or yep. whatever, for example, on NVMe. That'll help also. Um. All right. Cool. Anything else? All right. Thanks, everyone. Have a good week, guys. Yeah.